uh, the expectation of what the Lord does on services, so I can't even imagine three days, four days of, of being in the presence of the Lord, listening and learning, so everything. Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. God is good, and all the time, come on, higher heights, I know we can do better than that. God is good, and all the time, wonderful, a beautiful day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in, and it's yet another day that we're gathered here just to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, amen. Turn to someone next to you, give them a high five with a smile on your face and tell them good to see you and welcome to church this morning. Just find about five people, tell them good to see you. Amazing. It's good to see all of you and thank you so much for choosing to fellowship with us today. Those of you that are joining us online, thank you so much for choosing to worship with us today we hope and pray that you'll have an amazing time in the presence of the Lord now this morning we have we are in for a treat tell your neighbor we are in for a treat now look for someone who looks like they believe you and tell them we are in for a treat <laughs> we are in for a treat because our worship is going to be led by none other than the seamless worship Come on, let's celebrate this amazing team. Awesome people. They've done an amazing job through the youth conference on Friday night, Saturday night, and this morning they are here to lead us in worship. So let's encourage them. Let's love on them. Let's give them as much support as we can because these are our actual worship leaders for today, not tomorrow. Amen. Put your hands together for seamless worship. Come on, let me see your hands.
Let's dedicate this service into God's hands because, Father, Father, we love you, Father, we exalt your name on high. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to build this service. Father, we love you, Father, we exalt your name on high. Father, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to be praised. Father, we love you, Father, we exalt your name on high. Come on, come on, worship. Worship the Lord. He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the honor. Arakabasete yana mama mama tete kebe Fill this house of the press Rakabasete le e abasa Rakabasete le e abasa Worship his name, worship his name Rakabasete You are the leader of the nation 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 You are the leader of the nation
anticipation for sons to get up and take position there's no more room for procrastination we must arrive in creation creation grows in anticipation for sons
next song, we're asking the Lord to create an atmosphere in this place. We command a shift. Whatever bondage you've been holding may be broken today. In Jesus' name, we bless your holy name.
atmosphere ship now. We thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. We praise you, Jesus. All of us in this house lifting our hands to the Holy One of this love. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, this morning. We adore you, Holy Spirit, as the atmosphere is shifting. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge your presence. We declare the chains are breaking in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, all of us in this house, we are lifting our praises before the Lord. We are declaring our God is a mighty man of war. He is the champion. He is the supreme authority of our lives. And in this house, in the mighty name of Jesus, come on, don't keep your call. Don't keep quiet right now. There's a time to give him the worship that you deserve from our lips. Oh, and from our heart, like a in the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and bless the Lord. Go and Lord, go ahead and magnify His name. He is worthy of our praise. He is in the house. He is in the room. He is in the room. He is doing wonderful things. He is breaking chains. He is breaking strongholds. He is bringing captivity captive. He is bringing them free. This morning in the mighty name of Jesus. If I were you, I will mention my need before the Lord. I will tell the Lord, thank you. As you move in this house, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. My father, my father, bring your needs unto the Lord. Make your request known unto him. He is a faithful God. He is a wonderful king. He is a marvelous savior. Kariya Baba Bori Maratayra Dade. Tataria da Davere, Mazo Masanta Tada, Maria Taraburia Masia Bababa, Maria Terrie Haria Bakayanda Iraburie. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to clap the hand of the person who is standing by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we believe God this morning for chains to fall. We believe this morning for, 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 you know, for battles that we have been fighting for quite a while. We believe there is unction in this house to break the chains in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel there is a chain that needs to break out this morning. Glory be to God. I don't know why. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Raka, can you start speaking in tongues for two minutes? Let every chain in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, radia barika zika nolio, mababo barika ria diari ratika diaboli, in the mighty name of Jesus, 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 glory be to God, rakori da basa kayanda, mababo barika dia daria, mababo shakai ra. Maria Taide Bodhi, Maria Kazia Baba, Ida Die by Baru, Tatari Kadie by Satia, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead in the name of the Lord. Keep on speaking, keep on speaking, keep on speaking, keep on calling God, keep on calling God, keep on calling God, keep on calling God. He is in the house, 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 he is in the house. Rikadie, Daira Bodhi, Baya Tia Babodi, Maria Radie, Bararura Taira Ihe, Mababo, Barika. I see a in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Ruduba Babari Kataira Diabasia Mabana. I hear, I hear 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I hear, I come on in the name of the Lord. I keep on healing in my inner ear pornography. Praise the Lord. That spirit shall be broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's hit up our voices right now in the name of the Lord. Let's come again in that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want any young man to be moving around. I want everybody to be still in the mighty name of Jesus. Break that spirit in the mighty name of the Lord. Rakadira babu barika zika dadeni bababu barika riata ira rati arani. We break the spirit of pornography in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of perversion. We break it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Rakadira rababa bababa barika riri tai de bori basa tarada bababu barika riri bababu riasa tarani. We break that spirit today. We break it in the mighty name of Jesus. We break it in the mighty name of the Lord. Rikarela dabu. We are delivering our children. We are delivering our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, call upon the name of the Lord. We have to come out with our children in the mighty name of the Lord. We are delivering our children in the mighty name of Jesus. We rise against you. We rise against you. We break you this morning. We break you every captive that have been held by the Spirit. We break you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of perversion. We break you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, 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 in the Korea Basia Baburi, Maduro Baba, Maria Taira Pia, Baba Bo, Bari Korea Deri, Mazuka Taira Padia, Basia Taira Begi, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every captive, every captive, we declare their deliverance, we declare the power of God is here. It shall be broken. It shall be broken. The chain shall fall. The deliverance is here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I keep on hearing vows, 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 and covenants. Hallelujah. We are going to raise against any vow. In the initiation. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Any covenant that have been made by the kingdom of darkness, knowing or unknowingly. Today we are going to fight with the blood. Hallelujah. We are going to declare there is blood. Hallelujah. Come on, let's raise our voices right now. Break every covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. Made, made through fornication and adultery. There is power. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is in the house. Lord, we repent. Lord, we repent. On behalf of every vow, on behalf of every covenant, on behalf of every creation that happened with God. Today, Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus, there is blood. There is blood of Jesus. There is blood of Jesus. There is blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Radia Basia, Baba Bo, Maricaria, Maricarata, by Baradia Basia. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, even the prey of the mighty will be delivered. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We are declaring every helpless victim today they will be delivered. Because of the reason of our intercessory. Hallelujah. Let's go to the enemy camp and declare they are coming out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's raise our voices. Dadia by Barata Taria Dadaburi, Radira Barati Kadia Nazana, Redira Tai Kadi, by Kantareri. We are declaring today, in the name of Jesus, every victim they are coming out, every victim, in the name of Jesus, whoever are treated of the enemy, we declare today they are coming out, they are coming out, they are coming out. 
they are coming out. They are coming out in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Rakare la babo. Rakado do bo 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 shakaria makaya. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hand of your neighbor one more time. In the name of Jesus. Clap their hand. Uh, Jeremiah was not only called to approve, to destroy, and to overthrow. He was called to plant as well. The Bible says in, in, uh, in Psalms 33 that the Lord speak and it come to pass. He declare and it stands. That means we speak and it stands. We declare and it is established. Today we are going to speak to every person in this house. And we are going to say you are going to stand in the godliness and in the character of our God in the mighty name of the Lord. And we are declaring whatever you have been fighting today is your deliverance. Whatever you have been struggling with today is the last day because there is power in this house in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices and pray for them. Drunkenness, we command you to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of perversion, we command you to be broken. Lying spirit, we come against you. You shall not hide yourself in the wrong. We lose our people, we release our people. We declare in the name of Jesus this one that will stand, this one you stand. The hand of the Lord will be upon them. This one they will prevail. This one shall not go down. This one will be established. This one will stand in righteousness and holiness. In the purposes of God shall be accomplished in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I declare what I've been pursuing you. You shall overcome. The Lord is a man of war. He always leads us in victory. I declare you shall overcome. I declare you will stand. I declare you will prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, the Lord is in this house. Hallelujah, the Lord is in this house. Lift up your hands one more time. Lift them up before the Lord. Hallelujah. And as you lift your hands, amen, in Jesus' name, I feel the Holy Spirit of God is going to touch you wherever you are. Those people who have never spoken in tongues, you are going to speak in tongues for the very first time in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so all of us, if you desire, because the Holy Spirit is the one whom we are given by the law to help us in our battles and in our challenges. And therefore this morning in the name of the law, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you don't have power to overcome the flesh, even the devil. You need the Holy Spirit of God to overcome some challenges in the name of the law. As you lift up your hands right now, now in the name of Jesus, I want you to open up your mouth. Even for those people who have never spoken in tongues, the way you speak in tongues, you don't speak when you're closing your mouth. You open your mouth and the Holy Spirit will give you the utterance. Come on now in the name of the Lord. Every one of us here, even the believers who speak in tongues, speak loudly in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let's be still in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just be still. Be still. And the Lord speak to you. What is he telling you? In your spiritual ears, no movement. Rather, 
Ribobo Makidi. I am the Lord that will be lifted among all and above all other gods. Let every fear be drowned. Holy Spirit of God, thank you for what you are doing in this house. Thank you, you are healing the brokenhearted in this house. Thank you for hard situation that you are moving over right now. And thank you for relief that you are bringing to many souls in this house. Thank you that you are making darkness to disappear. Thank you that the right is appearing to many. Thank you for the word of hope. You are making it blessed on our heart this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I see a door. And I see before me a very big chain. And I see a lot of people locked in. But I see a very bright appearance of hand opening the chain and it is breaking. Hallelujah. I see multitude coming out. I see multitude coming out. I see multitude coming out. I see them rejoicing. I see them shouting as they step into their freedom and their liberty. In the name of Jesus. And I believe that there are many people who came into this house with the bondages, baggages, and, 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 and uh, many heavy things from generation. But I see them today entering into their freedom and their liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we bless the Lord this morning? Can we put our hands together? Can we give God the glory? In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Worthy are you, Lord God Almighty. You are worthy of our worship. 
Lift those hands one more time before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, whatever and wherever had held me before I came here, Lord, I receive my deliverance and my breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. The spiritual world is activated by words. Heaven and the earth, we are created by words. Is by words we give things power to live. The Bible says he sent the word and they were healed. They didn't, he didn't bring a doctor. He sent the word. The word of God is powerful. The Bible says by the word of the Lord, he hit the waters and laid the foundation, not by his hand, but his word. This morning, I don't know what your condition is, but if you believe God and you declare it so, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says that there are words we are given by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says He searched the deep things of God and He reveals to us, but as soon as He revealed to us, He gave us words. The next chapter you find that the Bible says He gave us words. So it is not enough for Him to reveal the words to you. You have to utter it because it's through the word of your mouth that you are set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when the Lord says something, it's not enough for the Lord to say. You have to believe it and you have to declare it for it to be established in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say Amen. So declare right now in Jesus' name. I'm receiving my deliverance right now. Say the chain that were holding me are broken in the name of the Lord. Say with me, I'm coming out with my family in the name of Jesus. I'm coming out with my life, everything that belongs to me. Come on, open up your mouth right now. Declare it so in the mighty name of Jesus. Do I have a witness in this house? Yeah, come on, put your hands together in the mighty name of Jesus. Clap your way through in the name of the Lord. Clap your way out in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I see your freedom. I say, I see your freedom. I see your liberty. I see you overcoming because the Lord has said so in the name of Jesus. Before I get out of your way, I want you to put those hands. I want you to clap. Hold on. The Bible says, when the children of Israel saw the ark coming into the battlefield, the Bible says they shouted until the earth resounded. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many weapons to fight the battles with. Sometimes it's not only one. Sometimes a song is a weapon. Sometimes a shout is a weapon. Sometimes silence is a weapon. Ah, oh, come on, somebody say amen. Because everything has an ear to hear the Lord. Today we are declaring our clap offering is not just a crop offering. It's a weapon in our hands. In the mighty name of the Lord. Come on, put those hands together. Give him the praise that he deserves. In the name of Jesus, let me hear a resounding voice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you. Come on, if you understand that Thanksgiving is the protocol of heaven, release a sound. Oh, I thought you guys know how to celebrate this God that did something in the room. I said, release a sound. Release a sound. Sound like a people that are excited to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. As you take your seats, can you greet three people? Hallelujah. Say hello, say hello to the person sat next to you, to the side, the person sat behind you, the people sat around you. Say hello as you take your seats. What an atmosphere. <laughs> what an atmosphere. I am so mocked by what the Lord is doing in this house. I don't know how many of you guys feel the same way, but I'm so, so mocked by what the Lord is doing in this house. Did we enjoy how the worship team led us so wonderfully this morning? Oh, come on, celebrate them, encourage them. 
I, I was just in awe of the doing of God when I was looking at them all stood here before the service started and I said it can only be God and I know you guys see the gifts but I know the people um, and they are so much more than that and they're such a blessing so encourage them see them you know to serve a generation you have to know the generation so can I encourage you guys to know them to find them you know and just just ask them questions about themselves because there's so much more than what you see up here and what you see up here is glorious unto the Lord anyways amen hallelujah we are well into extreme conference for those of you that don't know oh seamless help them out when I say extreme you say conference extreme extreme Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to church this morning. It is such a privilege and honor to see everybody in the room, to see people in the bleachers as well. Feel most at home today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are still choosing to rejoice in it. We are so, so glad to have one of every one of you guys. I appreciate everybody that usually comes, but can I give a, a special mention to everybody that's here for the first time? I know we're in the midst of conferences, so I'm seeing a lot of new faces. I've seen a lot of new faces yesterday seen a lot of new faces on Friday we love you we appreciate you we take you guys not for granted we know there's so many different ministries that you could have chosen to go to but I believe it's not a coincidence that you're here it's not an accident that you're here but the Lord has purpose for you to be here so we want to serve you that even after the service we have a conversation with you we have a um, minister Carol and sister Helen that will just converse with you guys and fellowship with you guys as well so please stay back we want to know more about you, your story, and how the Lord even brought you to Higher High Church, where we love, we, and we, amazing, and in that mood of appreciation, can we appreciate the people that are saying, that are online as well, can we say hello, hello, we love you guys, tell us in the comments where you're watching us from, and we want to know a little bit more about you as well in those comments section, hallelujah, it's such a glorious day in the house of the Lord. It's such a glorious day in the house of the Lord. I'm so mocked by what's happening. I don't even know how to move on from the moment. Hallelujah. We have been right in the middle of extreme conference. Oh, I thought people were excited because of what the Lord has been doing. We've seen hearts touched. We've seen stories change. The Lord has been doing such a wonderful thing all the way from Friday evening. So we've been here all weekend. Friday, the Lord's been doing something. Saturday, the Lord was doing something. Today, the Lord is doing something. This evening, the Lord is still doing something. Oh my goodness. If you can join us, we're back here from 4.30. 4.30. So purpose to be here a little bit earlier. If you know a young person, if you are a young person, there's still time to, to be in the room where it's happening. Hallelujah. Amazing. And who knows what's happening on Wednesday? Ah, people are excited. People are ready. So that's just a mere three days away. So it's here. The days are here. The days are here. I believe that leave is booked. I believe that leaves are booked, shifts are cancelled or they're postponed in one way or another. As we come to see what the Lord is going to do in this year's days of destiny, the year of our amazing amazing so a purpose to be here and in that same breath on saturday we're catering what we're calling the kids experience so we're catering to the children so if you know a kid all the way from 10 o'clock to 4 p.m there's going to be bouncing castles face painting ice cream trucks and the word and just fellowship so if you know a child if you're a parent purpose to bring your child in the house this is where it starts the people you see on the altar today don't just happen it starts from things like kids experience so please 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 as much as you come for yourself Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday bring your child so that they can also receive something on that Saturday can we agree to do that hallelujah amazing you guys are making my job very very easy this morning I want to usher us into the offertory session so I believe that the ushers are going to wait on us in the way that they always do so, so wonderfully. And as we move into this session, I just want to encourage us. I know a lot of us give in a variety of different ways. Some people give in cash. Some people give in bank transfer. Maybe some of you guys have even linked it um, so that it's a direct debit to your account. But even as you go into a mood of giving, 
as the worship team come up onto the altar, I want us to just be in a posture of checking our hearts and asking the Lord, yes, you know, I usually give this, so I usually give that, but what would you have me give unto you today? How would you want me to break open my alabaster jar? How would you want me to um, worship you in this act of sacrifice this morning? And even as we do that, even as we fill in um, our details onto the cards that we've received I want to lead us into the tithe declaration and then we'll pray for the offering as well is that okay so if you're giving tithe please kindly give it in this offering basket right here at the front and as we do that we know that the Lord honors um, the giving of a tither right so we want to declare that even as we tithe even as we give offertory that the Lord will honor us through this tithing declaration on the screen that's going to come up in the moment Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as it comes up, I'll pray for offering and then we can end, end in declaration in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for the opportunity to be in the room today. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. We don't take up for granted, oh God, the things that you've already done in our midst. Father, as we come to this session, we know that we are still in a mood of worship, even as we give unto you today. Thank you that we give because you first gave us, that even the monetary gifts that we give unto you and offering and tithe, we can give it because you have so wonderfully endowed us with the money to give unto you. And so, Father, we commit this offering, we commit this tithe into your hands today. Father, we pray that even as you receive it, that it would be unto sweet incense for you and you alone. Father, I pray that even as we trust you with this gift, that you would honor it and that truly we would be a people that are content, that truly we would be a people that have a blessing of more than enough because we've trusted you with this gift. In Jesus' name name we pray and say amen amen as we stand up to read the types declaration because it's that powerful that even as we decree it we believe it shall be established hallelujah so if we just read it all together and it reads father here i stand before you acknowledging that i cannot truly give you anything as everything is a gift from you and i have merely returned what is already yours today i bring my times to you as an act of honor and faith i ask that the windows of heaven be opened and blessings be poured out upon the work to which i have brought these tides grant me divine ideas insights concepts and favor that will bring distinction to the work of my hands may you rebuke the devourer on my behalf may i see breakthroughs in my life and enjoy good health and a long life in the land of the living hallelujah amen we believe it is so as the worship team minister unto us with a song You are not a God dependent 
put our hands together for this wonderful team. Praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, they are first time to minister here as a team, and we really want to thank God because of grace. You can't say it's their first time, can you? You can't. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's, that's just really amazing. Can you put our hands together for them and thank God. Uh, thank God. Let's appreciate uh, Pastor Bob as well. Amen. It's our work. Amen. And, and Pastor Nico, who had input in their lives. Let's put their hands together for them. In the name of Jesus, we bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And they've been having a wonderful, wonderful time here since Friday. And still we are coming back uh, at 4 o'clock later, as, uh, uh, as I have been already been said before. I've never heard some of them sing. Praise the Lord. I've never heard Fezzi Lead sing. I've never heard Grace sing. Praise the Lord. I've never heard them, but I thought all these blessings that have been in the house all are wrong. Hallelujah. The high time that we appreciate, they are not the future leaders. They are the leaders of today. And we give them the space. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's put our hands together for them one more time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you guys who are excited about the days of destiny? Just uh, from next week on Wednesday all the way for five powerful park to you know, meetings on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, we'll be here and I want to encourage you a lot if you can come. And on next week, on Saturday, we have a special session, especially one of the guests whom we wanted to come and minister during the youth conference because one reason or the other, he couldn't. But he's coming for the major conference. And one is great strength is the youth. And so there is a session which actually we have prepared for the youth. And uh, sometimes it takes somebody who knows things to help people through. You I understand what I'm talking about. And next week on Sunday in the morning, I want to encourage every parent to be here. We will be giving opportunity to speak to us, especially how to parent the youth and teenagers with the mind of the challenge that they go through. So next week on Saturday, even the people, Sunday, all the people who come here late, exactly at 9 o'clock, we are not going even to have prayers. We'll be having one hour and a half so that we want to uh, take so much who to be downloaded as well in the name of Jesus. Are we agreeable? If I were you, I'll make every, I'll, even I'll cancel a shift for me to be here because I know one word can really help my child to navigate through the challenges and I'll need there to be a support for them and whatever is needed, sometimes I don't know it, but there's somebody who can be able to help me to see things better in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. We have come to that opportunity right now where we hear the word of the Lord and uh, one of the things I think about the teenagers is that they don't know how to stay still. They are always moving around. Aaron, can you sit down? Yeah? Yeah? I, you, know, you see? They, they, they are always moving around. Praise, amen? Praise God. <laughs> are they giving offering or are they taking free water? Praise <laughs> I, th I, th I, th I, th I thought they were taking uh, offering, offering <laughs> envelopes, praise the Lord, but they are taking water. And nevertheless, uh, the parents have bought it in there, praise <laughs> But it's good to have a, a family service where all of us can be ministered together. Amen. Can we just bless the Lord because of our teenagers and our youth, just for them to be here in the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, we've been having a great, great time since last week, on, uh, since Friday. And uh, the servant of God who have been ministering to us is a person who is well known in Kenya, especially uh, in this generation. He ministered greatly to the youth, to schools. And uh, who knows that uh, there is an unusual grace to minister to certain kind of people. There was a grace to minister on Peter to the Jews, and Paul was some grace to minister to the Gentiles. 
And when God calls you, he empowers you for the audience or the constituency that he has called you to minister to. And uh, uh, Bishop Caris, as he is called, he has spoken to the youth. And uh, the thing has been downloaded here the last couple of days is amazing. And today, we still have him. He is the one who is going to minister this morning. When I saw him, I said, you, when you come here, you come to work. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And normally go to Kenya. When I go to Kenya, I find everybody leave everything and say, you are here. You, you learn with it. And so, Bishop, you, are, you, know, you learn with it. Amen. You are seated here and you are ready to receive. Amen. But he has been a, such a grace uh, upon his life to minister to the youth, and we have been having a beautiful, beautiful time. And today he wants to speak to us, parents and the youth and the teenagers, all of us together, because uh, we also need to know what they need to know so that they can be a help to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, can we put our hands together as we welcome Bishop Caris to come and minister to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, keep on clapping, keep on clapping, keep on clapping in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Hands before the Lord. Just lift up your hands. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this gathering, Lord. Because this is your gathering, Lord. And Lord, we give all the praise and we give all the glory because there is no time, no day you ever gather your people in vain. And Lord, I just want to thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of us. We thank you for what you're doing in this congregation, Lord. And Lord, we give all the praise and we give all the glory and we give all the honor, Lord. Lord, today, we expect to hear from you. Lord, today we expect to hear from you, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray that you may speak to us today. Lord, we are waiting to hear from you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit, Lord, that is in this place. Thank you for your presence that is real in this place, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. Why don't you just take a minute and just glorify the Lord? And just give him praise and just give uh, just take a few minutes and just give him praise just adore him just adore him just adore him just glorify him he has been so good he has been so faithful to us he has been so good to us he has been so faithful to us he has been so good to each and every one of us each and every one of us can testify of his goodness. Each and every one of us can testify of his faithfulness. Each and every one of us can testify that the Lord has been so good to you. He has been so faithful to you. He has been just so faithful to you. He has been working. Even the time that you, you don't know, he has been working. He doesn't sleep, doesn't slumber. He's just there taking care of you, walking with you. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake us. Says, There's no time that he ever went and left you alone. He has been wiping our tears day in, day out. Even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, he has been there with us. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we exalt your holy name. Thank you for this beautiful time you've given unto us. Lord, I ask that even as I share your word, I decrease and you increase. And use me as a vessel for the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say, and everybody say, why don't you give Jesus a hand clap for praise? I think we can do better than that. Why don't you give Jesus a hand clap for praise? And if we have young people in the house, why don't you make a beautiful show? Come on. I think we can do better than that. Why don't you make a beautiful shout to Jesus? Amen, 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 amen. You may have your blessed seats. Amen. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, the beautiful thing of being in the house of the Lord is just uh, being where he is. And I know he's here today. Someone say a good amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor he's here today. Just look at your neighbor on the face and tell him or her that he's here today. Come on. And I just thought before I go to the scriptures, number one, I just want to honor the father of the house, 
Reverend Peter, together with Mom Pauline, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for the good job you're doing in the kingdom of God in this place. May God richly bless you and increase you together with Miss Pauline and Mom Pauline in Jesus' name. Why don't you just appreciate them? Amen. I also want to honor all the men and women of God in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for the good job you've been doing. And um, I love this church. If I was in London, I don't think I can go to any other church. Hallelujah. So I think I'm a member. I, I, I just need to fill the membership card. Where are they? I don't mind even feeling them right here, right now. But, uh, but I'm just honored to be here today. I'm just honored to be here today. And I just thank God for what he's doing in this place. Someone say a good amen. I just want to thank also all the church members that are here, all the parents that are here, the young people, the teenagers. Thank you so much. May God richly bless you. And you know one thing, I, 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 I've gone to so many churches and I've been doing uh, the same job of the same ministry of reaching to the young people for more than 20 years. I went to the Bible school the year 2002. And since that time, and that's uh, the time I stopped playing boxing and I started serving God. And my area has been reaching out to the young people. Music through music, preaching the word, uh, using sports. I've been reaching out to the young people. But one of the things that I can tell you for free is there is no place you'll see the young people, especially in the church, where there is no presence of God. Let me repeat again. Any place, any church that you see the young people, there is the presence of God. We don't just go. Someone say a good amen. We don't just go. Let me repeat again. We don't just go. Amen. And there is a presence of God in this place. You see, there is something that God is doing to this generation. The Bible says in the book of Joel 2, verse 28, the Bible says, Then after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Someone say a good amen. So the young people that you are seeing, they are not just young people, but they are seed. To prophesy to this nation. To prophesy to the places they go in Jesus' mighty name. You see, they are not just teenagers in their house, but they are prophets in that house. Someone say a good amen. You see, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the ladies that was leading, one of the girls that was leading our worship in this place, he was mini- she was ministered to by my team in Nairobi, in Kenya. And they just coming here and just finding her was like a major, major blessing. And you know one thing? Sometimes you don't know where your seed will land. Mm-hmm. But one of the beautiful things is it's just a seed and one seed. But the fruits, come on, but the fruits, you can just see a teenager and just see a teenager. But the fruits, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't just look at teenager. Uh, someone say a good amen. You, there is no time you'll see a teenager walking alone. There are always a group of five, four, six, seven, ten teenagers together. So when you touch one, you don't touch one. You touch ten. Let me repeat again. When you touch one, you don't touch one. You touch ten. Come on. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're investing in, Right now may look like uh, the church is spending too much money trying to, to pump to the teenage and the youth ministry because they don't have anything to give. But you know one thing? You will enjoy the seeds in Jesus' mighty name. These children, these young people that you see, some of them will be doctors. And they shall not be just doctors. They shall be priests in that area in Jesus' mighty name. Some of them will be businessmen. They shall not just do business. Hallelujah. But they shall bring the kingdom of God in that business in Jesus' mighty name. Someone say a good amen. I don't know. Let me just start preaching. Hallelujah. Let me just start preaching. Let's just go to the Bible. Amen. If there is that, something that I feel inside me is any time I see the young people in the house of God. I've been ministering to the young people for a period of time and I'm like, uh, there is nothing that is beautiful like uh, just seeing the young people using their energy, dancing in the house of God. They are sweating in the house of God. Hallelujah. Someone say a good amen. Rather than going to those concerts, hallelujah. I don't want to say the name of the artists of those concerts. The Rema and the rest. Going to those concerts. And they're spending their energy. Just think about how they're enjoying in the house of God. So the house of God is full of joy. Mm-hmm. Someone say a good amen. The Bible says in the book of uh, Isaiah 43. 
The Bible says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am doing, I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. Someone say a good amen. The Lord is just about to do something new in this nation. Through the young people that you're seeing here. You, you, through the young people that you're seeing here. Through the young people that you're seeing here. Someone say a good amen. Let's just, just, let, let me just start preaching. Uh, uh, let's just open our Bible in the book of um, 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. I'm sorry I didn't come with my suit because I was told by J.S. Where is J.S.? Uh, where is J.S.? Uh, the bad influence. <laughs> I, wish, I, I wish I got some, uh, uh, some instruction from uh, Rev. But uh, uh, it's just J.S. Uh, J.S. The reason why I'm like... Uh, I'm like... Uh, uh, are you okay? Okay. First Kings 19. Yeah, First Kings 19. The Bible says, and Ahab. Are you there? So I'm using New King James, if uh, that's fine with you. So, but some of the scriptures I'll be using, some of the scriptures I'll be using, I'll be using maybe NLT, NIV, but uh, I'll be mostly reading New King James. And I have told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and also how he has executed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So, let the God do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. So she, he ran away. Let me, just, uh, let me just go slowly. I don't want to go very fast. I just want to go slowly. And, uh, by the time we are done with this service, we'll understand something and go home with something. And this time, Elijah is running away after just a big miracle taking place. After calling the fire from above. And uh, after that, all of a sudden, a woman sent a threat. Hallelujah. A woman just sent a threat. Just sent a threat. And uh, just Elijah did that, just decided to take off. Mm. Someone say a good amen. Just Elijah just decided to take off. And you know one thing? The reason why the Elijah is having an enemy is not because of the wrong he has done. Not because of what he has done, but just because of what the Lord has done. You know, sometimes we have enemies, not because of what we have done, but just because of what he has done through us. Someone say a good amen. And sometimes we cannot help it because it's not all about us. We don't have that power. The Lord has the power. And the Lord just has decided to use you. Someone say a good amen. And some of us maybe are here. You feel like uh, all the world is against me. People hate. They will be against you. Because of what God is doing in life, in your life. Someone say a good amen. Just after a successful time. And some of us, even after being very successful, sometimes the enemy shows up. We have been doing a series uh, in this camp, in this, uh, the last uh, couple of days. Our, our, our summer is all about the battles. We are always in the battlefield. You know one thing, sometimes just being, after being, having a successful time, that your business is thriving, that you are, I mean, you have, I mean, your, your, your boss, you and your boss is like, uh, things are doing so well. And all of a sudden, the devil shows up and you start running away. And you know one thing, sometimes it's just like, uh, I, 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 and this is my, 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 my topic of today, the hiding place. The hiding place. You see, each and every one of us are just trying to hide. Someone say a good amen. We are at a hiding place. Some of us, we are running out of our assignment. Just because of the threat. Forgetting that you are a carrier of the power of God. Just think about uh, the, 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 the anointing and the power that Elijah was carrying. And all of a sudden, a woman sent a threat. And all of a sudden, Elijah takes off. 
And you know one thing? He's, ra- he's running away from assignment. And some of us, we have been hiding for too long. But it's the time to get out in Jesus' mighty name. Someone say a good amen. It's time to get out in Jesus' mighty name. It's for a long time you have been hiding. Forgetting that uh, whosoever who calls you is greater. And forgetting that who is inside you is greater. Forgetting that you are a carrier of the anointing of God. And any place you stay. Hallelujah. Just think about how many times the devil has silenced our power. You see, each and every one of us, you have assignment. You see, sometimes we think about the assignment that God has given us is only for the pastors. But each and every one of us, we have assignments. Women that are here, maybe some of you, you have an assignment of, a, of, a, of a assignment of praying. But sometimes it's just because of a threat, you feel like, uh, I will never pray anymore. Why? The more you're praying, the more your sons and your daughters goes away. Let's continue reading the scriptures. Are we all doing good? Just running away. After manifestation of the power of God, Elijah is running away. A threat of a woman. Who does that? Who does that? Who runs? Am I just running away? Who does that? Let's just continue reading the scriptures. Verse 4, the Bible says, uh, But he himself went a day journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the broom tree. And he prayed. He prayed that he might die. (laughs) And said, It is enough. Now the Lord take my life, for I am no Better than my father. Just take my life. It's just because of the things that you're undergoing. Maybe some of you, maybe you are, that's the place you are. You are in between a hard place and a rock. And you're like, I'm done. But when you're done, that's the time the Lord shows up. Someone say a good amen. That's the time that uh, that, that, that the Lord shows up. Verse uh, verse 5, the Bible says, uh, Then, as he laid and slept under a bloom tree, Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coal and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him. And he said, Arise and eat, because the journey... The journey is too great. Just wake up. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, just wake up. Just wake up. Just tap your neighbor. Just touch up your neighbor and tell your neighbor, just wake up. Maybe they are just asleep. Just touch them again and tell them, just wake up. Just wake up. Just wake up. You see, one of the things that I, I always sometimes admire when I look at myself in the mirror, one of the things I admire is the prayers of my mother when I was not there. Let me repeat again. The prayers of my mother when I was not there. My teen's life, I was a boxer and a criminal. I was a leader of gang group in Korokocho and Dandora. And uh, every now and then, when I was, uh, when I was uh, any time I would come to my house, my mother's house in the morning, I'd find her praying. And sometimes you'll just hear the names, uh, the names, the names, the names. And there was a black sheep in the family. And one, day, one of the things that I realized is just no matter how hard things were on her life, no matter how deep I was going to crime, no matter how many guns I was leading, no matter how many criminals in my house, she never stopped praying. And you know one thing, every now and then, the devil wants you to get out of your assignment. Because he has assignment, and his assignment is to kill, to steal, to steal, and destroy. So he wants you to get out of the way. You are a hindrance. You are a hindrance. He wants to remove you. Someone say a good amen. He wants to get you out of the way. Why? He has an agenda. Someone say a good amen. Sometimes we, 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 just because of what you're undergoing, just because of the situation, we forget that we have an assignment. And you know one thing? Each and every one of us, we have, uh, we have excuse. Elijah had an excuse. Let's continue reading. He had an excuse. Verse, six, uh, verse 8, the Bible says, So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of the food for 40 days and 40 nights, as far as Herod, 
the mountain of God. Verse 9. And there he went into the cave. Mm. You see, cave is, has been a hiding place for so many of us. And maybe some of us are in a cave. Some of us that are here are in a cave. And the reason why there is so many, I mean, the devil is just having an advantage. It's just because you are sleeping in your job. God has called you to be a watchman, but you're not a watchman anymore. Someone say a good amen. You're not a watchman anymore. God has called you to protect and guide your family as a man. Be a priest as a man of that house. But you know one thing, you're going astray. A story is being told of a young boy that was following the father one day. And the father was following. I mean, he didn't know the boy was following. So the father closed the door and got out of the house. And it was a snow day. And then the boy also opened the door and started following. The father was not aware. The father went to a wine and spirit place to drink in the morning. Just after the first sip, the boys opened the house, the door, and uh, he was, the boy is following my steps. So let me ask you a question. Which steps are your sons and your daughter following? Amen. Let me repeat again. Which are the steps that your sons and daughters are following? You see, you're the most powerful parents. You're the most powerful book these young people can read. Amen. Amen. We have excuses. And each and every one of us, we have excuses. And every one of us want to be in a cave. Every one of us want to be in a, in a safer place. You see, we normally hide just because of sin, number one. Think about Adam and Eve after seeing they, they were hiding. We normally hide just because of the wrong things that we are doing. Are we okay? And you know one thing, he thought that, uh, I mean, I can hide away from God. Have you ever realized you cannot hide away from God? The Bible tells you he's omnipresent. Psalm says, in Psalms 139 verse 7, the Bible says, uh, where can I go? From you, from your spirit. Oh, where can I flee from your presence? So there is no place that you can hide. God is not there. And you know one thing, this sermon, maybe it's just to tell you to wake up. Someone say a good amen. This sermon is just to tell you just to wake up. This generation needs you. The reason why you're alive in this time is just because this generation needs you. Your assignment is not over. Some of the people maybe of your age, of your caliber, that the people you are born in the same time, the same age, some of them, they, have dead, they are dead and gone. But your assignment is not over. Is that the reason why you're alive? Someone say a good amen. Is that the reason why you're alive? Your assignment is not over. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor your assignment is not yet over. You have an assignment of this generation. You see, this generation are going through things that uh, maybe we don't understand. And sometimes it's hard to understand them. Sometimes they are battling things that are even, when, I mean, you cannot even comprehend. I go to schools, and most, I'm sorry, and sometimes the kids will ask me questions, and hard questions. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't have an answer. Amen. Some kids will... Just the, the, the battle they are fighting, we don't understand. And do you know one thing? Sometimes it's just because us, the people who are raising our kids are the teachers. We don't have time to our kids, for our kids, shift after shift. We are having a 16 hour shift. We are working from uh, Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, you are just uh, waiting for the service. You are like, want your marks. The service is over. Uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, it a shift. Someone say a good amen. And you're leaving our kids. Uh, our kids are being influenced by two people. They are being influenced by social influencers. The Kardashian, hallelujah, Rabba Zanta Karaba. You see, when we are growing up, we didn't have social influencers. Someone say a good amen. And the social influencers, they are telling them the wrong thing. Why? It's just because there is no one who is telling the right them, like telling them the right thing. So we have allowed the social influencers to change the way our kids. Yesterday, you were calling your son, your son, he. 
He's like, no, 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 I'm not he, I'm she. And to an extent, when you continue, uh, uh, she will even threaten you. I went, I went to, this was, a, uh, uh, this was a surprising thing all my life. I went to a place in state, Texas. So there was a family hosted me like three, four years ago before COVID. So that family had two girls. Had two girls. Two beautiful girls. So last year, I was like, uh, I don't know whether I'm seeing it right. So I went to say hi to one of the girls, the youngest. And I was like, uh, remind me your name. Oh, I'm the son of Shakarabazante Kamakarabo. Again, a son. Why? It's just because we, as a parent, we need to guide our children, but you're not guiding them anymore. That's the reason why our children, one of the things they cry so much about is uh, bundles. When the Wi Fi is not working, it's an issue in the house. Come on. Someone say a good amen. When the bond, the, 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 when it's not working, it's an issue in the house. One of the calls that I received from my son is just the dean. The internet is not working. And uh, they don't even know how to fix them. For, uh, I mean, when I'm home with my wife, we'll just call the people, oh, come and fix our internet. It's not working. When my son is there, a 17 years old boy, he can fix anything. And you know one thing, each and every one of us, we have excuses. We have excuses. We have bills to pay. I want to finish and uh, buy a car. Like some Rabaza. Yeah, you want to. You want to also be seen as a man. Hallelujah. And you know one thing, the devil is taking advantage because he doesn't have a problem with blessing you with finances. He'll give you finances, but he'll take over your family and take over a generation. Because whenever he takes your family, he takes a generation. Because that family cannot produce. Because the boy is now a girl. And the girl is now a boy. How can they produce? They will not produce. And now your generation is cut off. You see, we are serving a God of generations. So you don't have a generation. The one thing that you can brag is a good car. Hallelujah. And you're driving a good car when the devil is just taking over your families. Shakarabazata. Unless we stand on our positions. You see, all these things are vanity. And we say very well, it's their vanity. You drive big cars and go to hell with the big cars. You see, a big car is not a hindrance of going to hell. First, I'm so sorry. Maybe I'll never be welcomed again. But let me just say, let me, let me, be, let me finish today. Uh, we have excuses. And every one of us have excuses. Including me, I have excuses. But you know one thing, just think about when our children are taking off. Yes, I, uh, on Friday we were, watching, uh, we were watching Olympic. Did you see what was happening in Olympic? I just see, the, the, and the people who are playing, the people who are the bigger contributor of Olympic, they are young people, under 30 years old. They are the one running, they are the one uh, all doing all the co competition, under 30 years old. So just think about what are they being introduced to. And you know one thing, we as a church, as long as the pastor is saying that we shall be blessed with big cars, we shall live in a big house, we don't mind. Come on, someone say a good amen. And there are some of us, and there are some of us, oh, I'm gifted. I'm gifted in my art. I'm gifted. Do you know one thing? You might be gifted. And sometimes gift brings good sperm. But you know one thing? Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. And you know one thing, one of the things that we need to call upon is that God just anoints us afresh as a body of Christ. Someone say a good amen. Elijah was forgetting that he is a son of God. He is a child of God. Sometimes we forget that we are the children of God and God has given us the power and authority 
to trample over the snake and the scorpion. And sometimes we run and they don't know why we are running. But we are running just because we forgot that we are the children of God. The things that we are passing are dictating the way even we need to pray. Amen. The Bible says in the book of John 1.12, the Bible says, For as many as received him, to them he gave them power to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. Someone say a good amen. We have joined the family of God. And I want to encourage each and every one of us. There's nothing that can separate us from God. There's nothing that can separate us from God. There's nothing that can separate us from God. Even if the time that you don't feel like praying, just pray. I always just think about how many times my mom felt like I'm not ready to pray. My mom one day, we were just sharing testimony. And she told me we are just sharing testimony. And just because of my, my other life, I was not allowed to go to home fellowship. Because they thought that I would just go and spy. And after in the evening, I'll just come and break their houses. So I was not going. I was just in the house. And the only thing that I was a friend of was uh, TBN. I used to watch TBN all through. I used to watch uh, TDJ, everyone else, all through. And just because of that, one day we were just sitting. I think I, I, think I was waiting for someone to watch a uh, preaching. And we were just sitting there with my mom. And she started telling me that every now and then, I'll hear someone has been beaten by justice. Killed by mob justice. And I was like, uh, maybe that is my son. But you know one thing? God answers prayer. Someone say a good amen. When you are faithful with your assignment, you shall see the results. <laughs> Let me repeat again. When you are faithful with your assignment, you shall see the results in Jesus' mighty name. When you are faithful with your assignment, you shall see the results in Jesus' mighty name. God is not yet done with you. God is not yet done with you. There's no place, a dustbin of your prayers. And there's no dusting of your prayer. There's no dustbin of your prayer. Continue praying. Prayer is the only thing the Bible says. That, uh, continuously. 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 Let's just continue praying. And you shall see the result. And it's not far. The result is not far from you. Before, 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 before your time comes, I mean, you shall see the results of your prayer. The labor, the Bible talks about uh, the labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. God has seen the labor you have been laboring in his house, working and serving. Some of us that are serving in this church, sometimes they are like being called every now and then. There is too much to be done. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Someone say a good amen. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Are we all doing good? If you are blessed, say a good amen. If you are blessed, say a good amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Even the those children that you are praying for, there is nothing that can separate them from the love of God. There's nothing that can separate them from the love of God. The devil always wants to take away our home. When the devil takes you away from your home, he has control. When the devil takes you away from home, he has control. And when he takes control, he does what he does. But let's just continue reading the scriptures. Where are we? Verse 8 or verse 9. Verse 9. Let me just read verse 9 and verse 10. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, uh, for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altar, and killed your prophet with sword. I alone am left. They seek. Maybe you take away my life. Amen. I'm just here to encourage you, you're not alone. I'm here to encourage you, you're not alone. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you're not alone in this battle. Just encourage, just encourage them. Just encourage them. Just tell them you're not alone. Or maybe you're seated to next to a nice person. Just tell them he, him or ah, you're not alone. You're not alone in this battle. Just tell them you're not alone. 
Someone say a good amen. Let's just go to verse, uh, verse, uh, verse, verse 10. So, that's an excuse that David was, uh, that Elijah was. The reason why I'm hiding, the reason why I'm running away is just because of this. What is your excuse? See, some of us, the excuse are like, we are not eloquent enough for us to speak or to preach the word of God. Some of us, we have not gone to theology. Some of us, we have excuses. We, 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 we don't have the dress enough for us to be called pastors. We cannot dress as a pastor. We cannot even afford. Hmm. You see, each and every one of us, we have excuses. After giving my life to Jesus, I didn't have, because my life of crime was over. Anytime I was called to preach, I'll ask my dad. We were the same size. Are you going anywhere tomorrow? And then I was just, uh, oh yeah, he's close. Just think about how small I am. I, I mean, and I have this sharpshooter from my dad. And I was preaching in a crusade. And you know one thing? Eve, just think about if not of those clothes, I'll just be anointed as I am without them. And every now and then we have excuses. It was easy for me to say, I don't have, I can't afford to buy a suit for me to go to crusade. And each and every one of us, the devil always whispers the excuses. We don't have time. Just think about you're being tired. Why should you go for an evening service? You have been in the church in the morning. The Lord has already blessed you. Why should you go and excuse? Because we have given the devil our ears. Let's continue. Someone say a good amen. Are we all doing good? Just help someone and find out whether they are doing good. Oh, some of us are in the cave. It's just because we have our excuses are our wives, our spouse, our husband, and our wife. My wife doesn't, uh, doesn't want us to go to, that, to, to church today. She wants to sleep. Hallelujah. My husband doesn't want us to go to church today. He just wants us to rest. And today we are not going in the house of God. We have excuses. Oh, my wife was tired today. And the reason why we cannot go to that revival meeting is just because my wife is tired. Oh, now to you. Amen. Someone say a good amen. We have excuses. There is a, uh, there is a, there is a Kenya something in London. We have an excuse of not coming to the church in the afternoon. Hallelujah. We have excuses. Oh, there is a concert after church of Rema. There is something going on. There is something going on. And you know what? Thing? We have allowed the devil. We have opened the door for the devil. So whatever he's doing, just keep quiet. Because you're the one who has opened the door. After service, the first stop is in a wine and spirit. When you go to the stall, you're just where the wines are, where, where the spirits are. And you know one thing, your kids are seeing that uh, you're just uh, uh, dropping in the trunk. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a spirit. And you know one thing, when you're gone, they are alone. They will just have a sip and add water. You are wondering, my children are struggling with uh, alcohol. It's just because you're the one introduced them. You introduced them. Someone say a good amen. amen. We as Christians, we just need to have a stand. There must be a distinction between a Christian and a non-Christian family. Not because of the car that we drive you. Let's continue. We are, we are, we are fine. Uh, let me just continue. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just continue. Verse 11. The Bible says, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And beyond the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind turned into the mountain and broke the rock into pieces. Before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. So the Lord was not in the earthquake. So the place that you think the Lord is, sometimes he's not there. You see, we, especially we, let me say, we as a Kenyan and African, let me just say Kenyan, we define the blessing of God and the goodness of God with things. 
And we define someone is anointed just because of the car they are driving. One day I, was, I wanted to buy a car. And of course, I'm a lover of Mercedes Benz. Hallelujah. That's the reason why sometimes I'm like, I'm like uh, let me just today ride on a Mercedes. And I'm a fan of Mercedes Benz. And when I wanted to buy a Mercedes, I, I, I was having a friend who is also a minister and a young minister like me. And I was like, uh, which do you think uh, the car that I can buy? And he told me, Carice, you need to buy a good, well-maintained Mercedes Benz. Oh, shakara, ba, 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 ba. I are the Mercedes people here. If you're a Mercedes, say a good amen. You see, we are, uh, that, uh, you see, there are some cars that are, uh, just forget, uh, when, uh, when I'm in London, please, uh, if you are coming to carry me, please, if you're coming with your Toyota, please don't come. <laughs> <laughs> When I, when I took off from Kenya, I told my Toyota, bye-bye. I'm coming to a place of a BMW and Mercedes-Benz. So I'm your Toyota and uh, Nissan Sunny. Please, bye-bye. <laughs> so I'm with this minister and in my office. And we are just talking. And he's telling me, Cariz, let me just help you get a Mercedes-Benz. And one of the reasons is, I wanted to know why Mercedes-Benz. And he told me, any place you go to minister. I like traveling and ministering the word of God. Any place you go to minister, the car that you park determines how honorarium on how much money you'll be given. Hey, hey, hey. And I was like, ah, repeat again. Caris, let me tell you one thing. When you learn, even the ashes, the way they come to receive you in a big car, they will come different. They will come even four or three. But when you come with that Toyota, no one will notice you. You will get out of your car with your Bibles. And, and it was like, ah, do you define the anointing of God with the cars, with the things? Have you ever realized even the, de even the devil worshippers are driving cars? And even some of them big cars. Someone say a good amen. So the, the, the cars, they don't define. And you know one thing, the devil has allowed us to see the anointing of God in things. And give you things, and then he take away everything that the Lord has deposited in you. He gives you other things that you want, but he takes the way the anointing and the grace that you have been walking with. And that's the reason why some of us, we are empty Christian. Let's just forget. Let's just continue preaching. Some of us are empty Christian. You're like you're walking, but you're, 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 you're not even walking. You see, the Bible talks about uh, that uh, the devil is like a rolling lion. He's not a lion, but a rolling lion. But I always think like the devil is a, a hyena. He's looking for the dead. So I can finish them and crush them. And you know one thing, the reason why some of us are easy targets is just because we are empty. Oh, I'm so sorry, Reverend. I'm so sorry. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're not a target. Hallelujah. <laughs> just look at your neighbor. <laughs> just look at your neighbor and tell you you're not a target. You're safe. <laughs> Just tap other neighbor and tell your neighbor, you're not a target, you're safe. Hallelujah. <laughs> are we all doing good? If you're doing good, say amen. I'm, I'm in verse what? Verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still, small <laughs> still voice you see in the book of Exodus the Lord was revealing to Moses his goodness and here the Lord is revealing to Elijah that he is the word let me repeat again he's revealing to Elijah that he is the word the Bible says in the book of uh, John 1, 1, in the beginning there was, and the word was, 
and the word was? So he was revealing that I am the word. Let me just continue. Verse, 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 verse 13. So it was when Elijah had it. Think about when he had the, the earthquake, he don't, did not do anything. He was still in the cave. There, there was nothing that was shaking him. But the Bible says, verse 13, so it was when Elijah had it that he was wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Because with the power, with the grace, that's not the place of the man of God to launch. He was in the wrong place. And you know what? Some of you, you have been hiding for too long. And there is a voice that's calling you just the way the voice that called Lazarus. Get out of the cave. The same voice today. He's shouting to each and every one of us. Get out of that comfortable zone. Why? It's just because when we are comfortable, the devil is taking over our generation. When we are comfortable enjoying life, enjoying life, fasting is becoming an issue. Prayer meetings are less attended. When we are an empty Christian, one of the things is just like the devil is taking over. And you know one thing? God, God is revealing himself to Elijah. I am the word. And I'm just here to encourage you. This word, this word works to every generation. This word works to every generation. This word works to every generation. If we stick to the word, this generation will be saved. If we stick to the word and preach the word, this generation will be saved. They are not, they are tired of the things that you are saying. When we stick to the word, this generation will be saved. Someone say a good amen. Someone say a good amen. When we stick to the word, when we stick to the word, it's only God who can rescue a generation. When we get out of our comfort place, when we get out of our, our hiding place, few things will happen. Number one, you will accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Some of us, we cannot, we have never accomplished. We'll never accomplish. Why? We are comfortable. As long as a chicken is passing by two pieces. Hallelujah. As long as uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm thirsty, a milk, a glass. And uh, the devil just wants us to be comfortable. That's the reason why sometimes when I, when I, when I travel abroad, sometimes I was like, a, brother, I thought you were a very powerful minister. What happened when you went abroad? What happened? Oh, I don't even go to church. What happened? You don't go to church. I don't even have time. What happened to the time that you had? Are we serving God because we lack? And I'm just like, uh, what happened? The same God who called you in Africa is the same God who can sustain you every place that you go. He's a God of universe. Whatever God has called you to do, wherever you go, God has inside you, you have everything that you need to accomplish whatever God has called you to accomplish. Someone say a good amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God, you have inside you, you have everything that it takes. Everything that you need for you to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Everything that you need. Everything. When I started preaching, my English had just learned in the pulpit preaching. And every now and then I had a, in my church, I was just trying sometimes to preach in English. And they would laugh and they would have fun. And the, I, I, I mean, and just was the, I was just preparing myself to launch out. Someone say a good amen. I was just preparing myself. I, I was just preparing myself to launch out. Why? It's just because I believe what God has deposited in me is not only for the slum. It's for an international. God has called me to change and touch a generation all over the world. Not only in Kenya, not only the black, but also the white. Whatever God has put inside you is bigger. You see, the devil is just allowing you to be comfortable where you are. Hallelujah. 
who are in a self-confusion house. Do you know self-confusion house? Those are the house. <laughs> It's one room. It's one room. The bed is there. The seat is there. The, ki- the kitchen is there. You, you, when you sleep and when you wake up, you wake up by a style. Those dreams that uh, you have and you want a uh, uh, dream by walking, please don't do those in those confusion house. <laughs> and you know what? Some of us are there spiritually. God has prepared something bigger than what you see. Someone say a good amen. God has prepared something bigger than what you see. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God has called you for something bigger than what you see. Uh, just touch them. Just touch them. Just touch them. Just touch them. Let them know that God has called them for something bigger than what they... <laughs> Amen. When we get out of our comfort, our hiding place, number two, you will start celebrating victory. You will start celebrating victory. You will start celebrating victory. Just getting out of your comfort zone, you'll start celebrating victory. You see, I cannot even count how many victory I have seen when I just got out of my comfort place. One day I went for a mission in a place called Lodua, a dry place. And you know one thing, of course, I had, a, I had a, a one suit, a brown suit. And I was given for by someone who was coming abroad. So I got a, a brown suit. And that suit, I was like treasuring it so much. So I was called for a mission and preached in a crusade and an open air in Lodwa. And the miracle that I saw with what, that one suit, that's because, not because of luck, but just because of the grace inside you. You see, God wants to use what is inside you. Let's just get out of our comfort place. You see, the kids that we are raising, they are not just raising them in the house. We are raising them and they will be in different places and being a blessing. But when you raise your kids, when they go, they will be a curse. That's the reason why we, in Africa, we raise a lot of money to take our kids abroad for education. But when they go there because they don't have a stand, they don't have a foundation, they are there, they are lost, they are there, they are drinking, and everything that you every now and then you're praying, you're praying. Oh, my child is addicted. But you know one thing, it's just because they did not have a firm foundation. Amen. You start enjoying victory. Hallelujah. You see, my first job as a child, as a pastor. My first job, I was ordained as a pastor to the year 2006. So the first job, I was working in a church in the slum. My salary was uh, 150 Kenyan shillings. That's like a, that was like a 1.2. But one, it's like one pound. Yeah, it's one pound. That was my salary every Sunday. And after preaching, after finishing the service, the young people are waiting. Hey, Pasi, please. We need just buy for us, buy for us, buy for us. I mean, you're like nothing. You don't, you don't have anything. But you know one thing? It just, that did not take the anointing away from me. You see, we have been, we have not seen victory. We have not been celebrating. It's just because uh, we have been in the same confused house for too long. Come on. If you are ready to celebrate, say amen. If you are ready to celebrate the goodness of God, just say a good amen. If you are ready to celebrate, just say a good amen. Why don't you give Jesus a hand clap of praise? <laughs> When you get out of the hiding place and out of the cave, you shall hear the voice and hear it clearly. You shall hear the voice and hear it clearly. You see, some of the, sometimes we cannot hear why we are so, I mean, the the world around us is so loud that we cannot hear the voice of God. Hmm. The world is so loud just because of the standard they have put in your life. And we are missing just because of the, the standard that people have put in our life. I'm finishing. God has called us to feed the fish, uh, the, 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 the sheep. But some of us, we normally think that God has called us to feed the giraffe. The standard is so high to the young people they cannot reach. The standard in the house is so high for the young people and they're like, I'm done. But God has called us to go down to the sheep. You see, the standard has been so high. The young people cannot meet that standard. The young people cannot meet that standard. The standard is so high. But you know one thing, the Lord has called us 
to go and feed the sheep. Let's all stand up on our feet. Why don't you just lift up your hands before the Lord? Lord, we thank you, Lord. And I just want us for a few minutes, for a few minutes, I just want us to pray for this generation. For a few minutes, I just want you to just uh, pray for this generation. I know you have your needs. I know you have so many things that you want. You're here, you want to pray for. But why don't you just take a few minutes and just pray for the youth uh, and the teenagers that, that, are, that are around us, that are around us. Let's just go ahead and pray for the teenagers that are around us. They just need our prayers. They just need our prayers. They just need our prayers. Let's just pray for the young people that are hanging around with our, with our children, with the, our, 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 our children. Let's just pray. Let's just commit them before the Lord. I think we can do better than that. Let just every one of us just open up your mouth and just intercede. Let's stand in, stand in the gap right now. Let's stand in the gap right now. And that our children will not be found. That our children will not be found in those councils of LGBTQ. And that our children will not be found in those councils in Jesus' mighty name. That our children will not be found in clubbing in Jesus' mighty name. Rabaza can take a rabababarika. I just go in clubbing right now. We call them right now with the mighty name of Jesus. Rabaza karabababarika, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our sons and our daughters, our Father, Lord God. And wherever they are, our Father, Lord God, who are not in the house, our Father, Lord. We call them right now. We call them right now. We call them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Shakarabababarika, Lord. That me and my house we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve you, Lord. The Lord, our children shall be found in your house. Our children shall be found in your house. Our children shall be found in your house. Uh, that shall children that will worship you, Lord. Uh, our children will worship you, Lord. Uh, the energy of our children, our Father, Lord God, uh, shall be used to serve you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we paralyze every plan uh, of the enemy right now upon our generation, Lord. Uh, upon our sons, upon our daughters right now. We paralyze them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Rabaza can take a rabababababababa rabo. Rimaza can take a rabababababababa. Rimaza can take a rabababarika lord. Rimaza can take a rabab. Rabaza can rabababarika lord. I thank you lord for salvation lord. I thank you 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 for a turn. A turn oh god. In the mighty name of Jesus. How we thank you lord. How we glorify you lord. Rabaza can take a rabababa rabo. Ramaza can take a rabba. Rebaza can rabababa rika lord. I thank you for your word is fine, oh lord. I thank you, Jehovah, Lord God. Ramaza can rabababa rika lord God. Rebose can take a rabba. Ramaka rabose can take a rabbo. Rebose can take a rabba. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, my Lord. Oh, my King, Jehovah, Lord God. Oh, I thank you for your doing, Lord, oh, in our family, Lord. Oh, I thank you for your visitation, Lord. Rabba Zaka, Rabba Barika, Lord God. That our sons and our daughters and their peers shall be found in your house. Shall we worship the Lord of Lord? At the King of Kings, Lord. Lord, I thank you because you are a God of our generation. And Lord, I thank you for our generation shall grow. Remazaka Rabababarika, Lord. Our generation will not be cut off, Lord. Our children, Lord, shall produce, Lord. Shall give birth in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I give you praise and I give you honor. For you're doing something great, Lord, something wonderful for the glory and honor of your holy name. Shaka Rabba Baba Barabo Zi Kante Karaba. Ribaza Karaba. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, let's continue praying for the young people in the name of Jesus. Yes, they will stand. Yes, yes, 
Yes, they will find hope in our God. They will stand. They will prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. They will stand. They will stand. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, continue crying unto the Lord. Continue saying, yes, they will stand. Yes, they will prevail. Yes, they will make it. We stand with them. We hold their hand by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord shall lead them. And they will triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. We serve a God of generations. We declare our generations are blessed. The Bible says, hallelujah. Blessed are the people who God is their inheritance. In the name of Jesus, our God is our inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall fear the Lord. For the Bible says that righteousness lift a nation in the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are here, you are here, you are here, and you know the children are struggling. I recall the, the testimony of mom of uh, uh, Bishop Karis mom. She never left the place of prayer in the name of Jesus. May all discouragement against what we see, may we be able to overcome in the name of the Lord. Call upon your daughter once again in the place of prayer. Call upon your son once again in the place of prayer. Don't leave them. Don't leave them. Call upon them. Stretch your hand of faith in the name of Jesus. Let your prayers reach them. Even if you feel they are safe. Even if you feel they are safe, come on now in the name of Jesus. Call them by their names. Prophesy to them in the name of Jesus. Call their names. Call their names in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, carry on. Come on. Hallelujah. Call them by their names in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Radia Babori, Maradia, Radia, Basia Bakana. Put them in the right cause. In the name of Jesus, the spiritual realm. In the name of the Lord. Iradia Santari. Radia Bababo. Barika Yadia Radia Rabina. The Bible says that Abraham saw 41, 42 generations in the name of the Lord. See your generation and call your generation blessed in the mighty name of the Lord. There will be stand where the sin abounds, the grace abounds even more. There is enough grace to keep them in the throat in the name of the Lord and thrive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. King of glory, we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the most powerful things that God has given us is words. <laughs> words. Hallelujah. Words. And tonight, this afternoon, one of the things how we speak faith. By the way, let me say something. <laughs> when we pray, it's not that you are making God aware of our situation. The Bible says he knows what your needs before you pray. When we pray, we release our faith. That's what prayer is all about. <laughs> prayer is not making mention what God did. <laughs> no, 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 no. He knows. The Bible says before you pray, he already knows. But when I pray, is I'm releasing my faith. And listen to me. Because your faith is just, you see like there is a wire here. And that wire, unless there was a socket that was put in there and somebody put on the, they put on the wire there and put on the switch, then we enjoy the right here. The power of God is always present. But your faith is like the adapter. You put it there in the name of the Lord and then you enjoy the power of electricity. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Today we are going to connect our spiritual prague in the name of Jesus. By faith in the name of the Lord. And you are going to declare one more time. You are going to prophesy. You are going to call your child. You are going to call them in the name of Jesus. If Lazarus was dead and stinking. And the word brought him forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Not a doctor. The word. Amen. The Bible says that in your mouth there is a power.
powerful weapon called the word. Call your children right now. Call them in the place of prayer and the place of fearing God. One more time in Jesus and lift up your voices right now. Prophesy, 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 prophesy. Don't say what you see. Prophesy what you want to see in the name of Jesus. That word will catch up with them in the name of Jesus. Rakadada Baburi, Mazaka Dade, Bababori Karia Dadali Razika Dairaba, Malika Dari, Baibaria Tatari Kadia Baburi. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to clap hard of somebody right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Clap one person. The other day, the Lord told us it was a shifting service. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, speaking in tongues for two minutes. Rada debo. Shada dayanda iraboria. Mado daradia daidabe. Barantoru adadi. Marati kadadia baba. Barantoru dudu bushaka dadaira. Mababu barikaria daidere. Madadua baranta taradea. Dibibi baradua baba. Barantara dadazia rada. Mando badu aburia. Dadabia barantara. Dadabie baba borie. Marantoro dodo bobo. Shatari karia dadie. Mazema Santa Tarada Dabia Baboria Baranturua Bashantala Dabi Redo Babu Baruntaua Basia Tata Bababira Maradika Dadu Barantaria Dade Barantialia Basia Mababa Boria Bazini Rede de Baikampa Tataira Beri in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the world was created by words. The Bible says the beginning was the word. And the Bible says there were chaos and things were out of order. And the Bible says, and God said, and he established everything by words. The Bible says whatever he said, it came to pass. And whatever he declared, it was established. We speak right now every chaos in our family. There will be order. In the name of Jesus, we declare our children are for sign and wonders. We arrest every child, we arrest every runaway behavior. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we declare, as the Bible says in the book of Hosea, that Lord, you put hedges and you put this along the way that the Israel could not find the way. We declare everyone who is going the wrong way. We put these toes and barriers along their way. They will not find their way in the wrong places. We call them back in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare you will serve our God. Because there is no other God beside him. There is no other one beside him. And right now, if you came from our realms, you will serve our God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call every child, we call every family, we call every situation that is beyond human ability. We declare in the name of Jesus, our God reigns. We command order. We command order by the blood, by the word, and by the spirit. And we declare in the name of Jesus, let our children serve our God and God and him alone. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare in the name of the Lord, you shall be a lemnant in our generation in the name of the Lord. For the Lord says he will never himself without a lemnant in it. You will be the lemnant. You will be the lemnant in the name of Jesus. We declare it so and it shall be established because we have said it in Jesus' name. And the people of God says amen. Come on, let's put your hands together for Jesus. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen Hello and everyone. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you for tuning in to our service this afternoon. We would just like to thank the Lord for you for taking time out, for sacrificing your time. Whether you're watching us from your place of work, whether you're watching us in a bus, by the airport waiting for your flight, we just want to thank the Lord for you and we just want to appreciate the fact that you have taken time to be a part of High Heights Church this afternoon. I hope you have had time and you have listened to the word and I hope the burden of the word of the Lord has been laid in your heart. And all I pray for this afternoon is 
that the greatest response we can give to the word of the Lord is to actually give our lives to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that it is who that believes in him that shall receive eternal life. And I just want to give someone an opportunity this afternoon to just receive Jesus Christ in your life. And if you're there and you're saying, yes, pastor, here I am. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This is the best time and salvation is today. So just say right after me, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart. I believe that you died, that you, are, that you arose again, and that you are seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe that you are coming back again to receive us into that eternal kingdom. Okay, into, into that eternal kingdom. And so we just like to thank everyone. And let me just say a prayer for you if you have said that prayer. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because of your servants that have given their lives to you this afternoon. I pray for the Spirit of God to come upon them this afternoon, that they shall live out this salvation. They shall work out this salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you shall help them. I pray that you shall lead them, be their guide, be their support in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for strengthening. I pray for divine grace in the name of Jesus Christ. We do pray and give thanks. If you are there and you are looking for a church, look for a Bible-believing church near you. Or if you're in Slough in the UK, you can come and join High Heights Church where we can be able to continue discipling you. And sure you get a, a, a discipling materials from us we'll be able to, uh, that will be able to continue growing you up, that will be able to give you stature in the spirit and so that you can stand as the Bible uh, commends us. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in. See you next time. God bless you.